In this problem, we're told a diver runs horizontally off the end of a diving board with an initial speed of 1.85 meters per second. If the diving board is 3 meters above the water, what is the diver's speed just before she enters the water? Right, so the first thing you always want to do is draw what's going on. So we have this diver, right, their initial velocity, v sub 0, is 1.85 meters per second. And so notice this is their velocity in the x direction. So this is their velocity, right, in the x because they're going horizontally. Right, so they're going to go like this and they're going to jump off. Right, and we know it's three meters from the diving board to the water, and then they're going to enter the water with some velocity. And so notice what's going to happen. It's going to they're going to go in at an angle. Right, they're not going to go in just horizontally. Right, because gravity is going to pull them down. So their final velocity. Right, what we're trying to find the velocity before she enters the water. Right, v. Since it's going to be a vector, right, because or it's not going to be a vector, but there's going to be two parts. Right, when you want to find the velocity when there's a velocity in the x and the y you need to do this, right? So you need the velocity squared in the x and the velocity squared in the y. You can think about it, Pythagorean, a squared, or sorry, c squared equals a squared plus b squared, right? So c squared is basically the resultant of the velocity, right? Because there's velocity in the x and the y when she's going to enter the water. So what we need to do is find her final velocity in the x, her final velocity in the y, square both of them, add them, and then, right, take the square root, and that's going to give us what we want, okay? So let's think about how this problem works. So we can do that by doing the given. So notice the velocity in the x is not going to change at all, right? The velocity in the x is going to stay constant, right? It doesn't change. So the final velocity she, uh, she's going to enter the water, right, is going to be the exact same, right? So her initial velocity is going to be the same as the final velocity in the x at the end, meaning v sub x is still going to be 1.85, right? But what we need to do is find v sub y, right, because we don't know what that is, right? So how do we do that? So you always want to write the given in the x and the y. But we don't need to do the x in this case because we know the final velocity in x is just the same as the beginning. So v just equals, I'll just write it in now, 1.85 squared plus, and then let's find v sub y squared. So well, we do that by writing the stuff in the y that we know. So what do we know in the y? So since she's going off horizontally, the initial velocity in the y is still 0, right? Because if something's traveling horizontally, that means there's no vertical velocity. So it's just 0, right? Because they're not moving. So we know that. We know the change in the y from the beginning to where she's going to enter the water is going to be uh, 3 meters, right? So she's going down 3 meters, so you say the change in the y is minus 3, right? Since she's going down, because up is positive, down is negative, so the change in the y is minus 3 meters, okay? And we also know acceleration in the y is minus 9.8 meters per second squared, right? This is just the acceleration due to gravity, and it's negative because it's going down, right? So now that we have three kinematic variables, Right? Notice what we can do is solve for the final velocity in the y. Since we have the initial velocity in the y, we have the change in the y, and we have a. So all we got to do is use one of the kinematic equations, and we can solve for v sub y. So the one I think we should use is this one right here. v squared equals v sub 0 squared plus 2a times delta y. It says delta x, but they're, or they're interchangeable. Right? So all we have to do is if we want to find v sub y squared, right? we just got to do all this. Right? So v, su uh, v sub y squared, and so... I'm not actually going to take the square root and just solve for v sub y, right? Because we're going to plug in v sub y squared. All I'm going to do is just find v sub y squared. So it's just going to be equal to this part right here, right? So v sub 0 squared, which is just 0, right? So 0 squared is 0, plus 2 times the acceleration in the y, which is minus 9.8, times of the change in the y, which is minus 3. So it's just going to be 2 times minus 9.8 times minus 3. Keep in mind the minuses are going to cancel. And you're going to get the final velocity in the y squared is 58.8. And it's going to be meters per second, right? So keep in mind, uh, right, v sub y squared, all we have to do is plug it in if we want to find v, right? So the resultant. So we can just plug it in. This is just going to be 58.8. And then you just want to solve this, right? So it's just going to be 1.85 squared plus 58.8. And make sure you do the square root of this. So when you do this, you're going to get it equals 7. 0.888 and so on. I'm just going to round to 7.89. The units are going to be meters per second because it's velocity. So 7.89 meters per second, that's going to be the velocity uh, that she's going to have right before she enters the water. So uh, basically, we just took the resultant of the x and the y final, and then yeah, we just get this. So 7.89 meters per second, that's going to be uh, your answer to this problem, and yeah, hopefully you found this useful.